Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a new copy of Lizard Wizard. It's an economic set collection game by Forbidden Games. So Astoria is back and is now pulsing with magic and intrigue. Lizard Wizard has similar mechanics from its predecessor, Raccoon Tycoon, but now you get a deeper experience, which for me brings me back to show you this game. So let's get right into it. I'll cover the options you have during the game. Players take turns taking one of six possible actions on their turn and going around until one of the decks of the cards on the board are depleted. Which would be these wizards, the tower cards here, spell cards, or familiars. Also, before going over the six different actions, which will be listed on your player screen or the back of the rulebook, you need to know how to win, which is to score the most points. You score points by the cards that you get throughout the game. Each wizard card that is paired with the same type of school of magic to a tower card is worth 10 points. As you can see, these two cards are the same school of magic here, and one is a wizard and the other is a tower. 10 points. If you're in the game with some wizard cards and tower cards that are not of the same school, then each pair of those are worth 5 points. Any wizard or tower card on its own not paired with any of the other is worth 1 point each. And then each spell card that you have that is from the same school of magic as your paired tower wizard pair, it's worth 5 points. But these are only if you have casted this spell during the game. In addition, some spell cards will state that you can score points if you fulfill the specific objective, and you will score those points. Gold coins gathered throughout the game is equal to its value in points, then whoever has the most treasure from the dungeon will score 10 points, and the second most will score 5 points. Lastly, each achievement tile that you score during the game is worth 10 more points. So you're trying to collect specific cards, most likely trying to pair a wizard with a tower, and then a spell, all in the same school of magic. So now you kind of see which cards you need. Let me go over how you get them, and explaining those six actions that you can take on your turn. Action 1. Gather Reagents. Everyone will start with three reagent cards in their hand. You will play one of them for this action. From the top half of the card, you will pick three different items to take from the supply to add to your own supply. Some cards will list just three, but some might list five, in which you would pick three of the five listed. You would only be able to gather the same item twice if it is listed twice. The bottom half of the card will then increase the value of each item listed. You'll simply move that item up on the track on the board. This will increase its value. So later in the game, you might sell items when the value is high. Also, in the beginning of the game, everyone will start with two reagents of their choice, and there is a limit on how many reagents you can hold, which is 10 plus 1 for each tower card that you gain throughout the game. Action 2. Convert reagents to mana. Here you will turn one type of item back to the supply to gain mana. Mana is money in the game and everyone will start with 20. So if you have 4 Mandrake and it was at 7 on the track, it would gain you 28 mana. I then lower the value of that item by the number of tokens of that type that I turned in. In this case, I had 4, so I move it down 4. This is going to be one of the main ways to get mana during the game to use for some of the other actions. Mana also is hidden behind your player screen, so other players don't know how much you have. Action 3. Recruit a wizard. Here, you will select one of the two wizard cards placed out, and a bid of mana is initiated. This goes around with players either increasing the bid or passing. Once you pass, you're out of the bidding war. The player that bids the most takes the wizard card and places it in front of them, and a new wizard card is then placed out. If the current player wins the bid, their turn is over. But if another player wins the bid, the current player gets to choose another action. Any of the six, including taking the wizard action again, choosing the wizard card that just got flipped out. Wizard cards are not just good to make sets for the final scoring, but each one has a reagent connected with it. So when you have one or more of these cards, going back to Action 1, Gathering Reagents, you will take three from the card, plus one for each wizard card that you own. 
so wizard cards will increase your reagents when taking action 1. Action 4. Research a spell. There are four spells laid out to choose from. You will select one and pay five mana for it. You will then place that spell card in front of you. If you have the reagents listed on the bottom of that spell card, you are then allowed to cast the spell right then and there if you like doing what it says on that card right now. Spell cards are all different. Some, when cast, give you a one-time bonus. Other times, it's an ongoing effect. Or others is a way to score points at the end of the game. While playing the game, just keep your eye out on the spells because they really can be game changers in the game. Now you know about spells, you should know that if you picked one up but you haven't performed it yet, you can do it on the same turn as when you paid for it, or going back to action one again, anytime after gathering reagents, you can cast a spell paying the listed items. The other time that you can cast a spell is when you summon a familiar to take a specific action within that action, but I will go over that when we talk about that here in a bit. Action 5. Create a tower. Towers come out one at a time. You can either pay the listed reagent on the card or the number of gold shown. You will then place that tower card in front of you and it will add an extra storage space to your reagents. A new tower card is then flipped out after your turn. Tower cards are organized during setup so that there is one of each school of magic card that costs either one gold or one reagent on top. After those are taken, then each school of magic will appear again, but costing two gold or two reagents of the same type, and so on. So things get more expensive as the game progresses. The wizard deck is not like this. There is just a number of each wizard with the school of magic in the entire deck, and the wizards come out totally random. Spells come out randomly as well, and familiars are also staggered so that they cost five mana at first, then 10, then 15, and so on, with one of each school of magic showing up at each price. Action 6. Summon a familiar. There are two familiars placed out, and you will need to choose which one you want. You will pay the mana listed on it, and you will do one of the four actions listed on it. These actions are either take one gold for each card with the matching school of magic that you have in your own tableau, this would most likely be a good move to do later in the game. Or you can gather reagents shown on that familiar card and then cast any spells. Or you can research, which means you will wipe out all the current spells, and then you will place out four new ones and take one without needing to pay for it. Or the last possibility is to enter the dungeon. The dungeon lets you push your luck, possibly finding treasure or gold. But if you get attacked or hit two times, you lose everything. You will draw one card from the deck at a time, deciding each time if you want to continue drawing or if you are done. When you are done and you don't have two hits, you keep everything that you drew. If you continue and you get hit twice, you lose everything you have. And those cards that you lose are then shuffled back into the dungeon deck. There are 20 monster cards, 21 gold cards, and 10 treasure cards in the entire dungeon deck. So your chances of getting something good is higher than 50%, and you also get two hits. So yeah, not too bad, right? Also, monsters get reshuffled in each time, so the percentage of good stuff in the dungeon will slowly get worse. And those are your six actions that you can perform in the game. Now if you want to know, there are seven schools of magic in the game, there are 28 tower and wizard cards, 7 different reagents, again with spells, when gathering reagents, you may cast one spell. When researching a spell, you can cast that spell. And when summoning a familiar and choosing the gather reagents and casting a spell action, you can cast as many spells as you want. With all those options, pay in the reagents listed on that spell to do so. The last thing I haven't talked about are the achievements. There are 20 different achievement tiles that can be used during a game, and in a game you will use four at a time. The first player to achieve that achievement will gain the trophy and get 10 points for doing so. So it might be a good way to intertwine your strategy with some of these to gain some extra points at the end of the game. 
And that's it. Score points when a deck is empty and the player with the most points wins the game. The most confusing part of the game is the in-game scoring, and of course, if you want to win the game, you need to know this. When I first played after the rules explanation, it seemed to me that one of each card in a school of magic will get you the most points, which that is almost true, but not really. Familiars are not going to affect the in-game points, but they do give you ways to do extra things that you normally wouldn't. Those familiar cards, also when used when you have a lot of cards of the same school of magic, can get you a lot of gold, which each are a point at the end of the game. The commodity track is a fun way to use your items the best way possible. Prices will be going up on each item until a player decides to cash out and get more mana. And that lowers that reagent's value. So if another player sneaks in before you, you might decide not to pay out and hold on to those reagents instead, which can stall you out because you do have a limit, which is also pretty easy to get to, especially if you have a lot of wizard cards. Those wizard cards will let you gain more and more when doing the gather reagent action. Again, tower cards will increase your limit, but it's only going to do so much. Anyway, so now since the other player sold before you, you're stuck with your reagents and you can't get more because you're at your limit. So how do you use them? You can try to sell a different type that has a high value. You can wait and use them to pay for a tower card when that card shows up, but they only appear one at a time. So the chances of you getting it might be slim. You can find a spell card that might require those reagents to cast it. Again, spell cards are like the secret in this game. They can be huge game changers. There are a lot of different variety of them as well, so if you get a certain card, it will make other actions or other things more valuable. The auction of wizard cards is great. Players can be strategic with this waiting for others to spend all their money, and when no one else has much, you take that action and you end up paying less than everyone else did for what they got. I also like trying to win the auction when it's not my turn, as it gives me a free turn, making my overall game more efficient. The game also includes a fun push-your-luck mechanic with the dungeon cards. I'm a big fan of going to the dungeon. I just love doing it. But it does include some luck. Some players stay completely away from this action while others like to see what happens. Ultimately, I like doing it if I feel like I'm behind and I need a boost in the game. But as the game goes on, this action might not be as desirable because... Later in the game, you can instead get more gold or points when gathering gold for each card of the same school of magic. And the gold that you find in the dungeon and the possible treasure just might not be worth the risk at that point anymore. Plus, the percentage of good stuff later in the game will be decreased from other players going there. Overall, this is a solid game with lots of interaction on the table due to the bidding, the desire for certain cards, and spells that can change things up. The game has a deeper strategy than Raccoon Tycoon, yet it still has that family weight type feel to it. New players can understand what is happening, even though it is hard to see who is winning the game while you're playing the game. The game for me has played different each time I've played it, mostly due to different spells coming out, but also players might decide that a value of a wizard card is worth different in one game to another. And if the value drops, then there is more mana to use on other actions. But also, another secret is if you want a faster game, then you need to push those wizard cards at a lower price point. Again, they will be going at different prices, but like in our game, the going price seemed to go around 10. 10 mana for a wizard card and 1 commodity or 1 gold for a tower card. So the game changes depending on the type of players you have in the game, and new players will just tend to assume that a card is worth as much as the first couple go-arounds. So again, if you really want to speed up the game, just bid on wizards, and if it goes above, say, 5, you just pass, and they pay, and then you bid on the next one. Keep doing this until the prices will get lower, and players will change what they see as the value for a wizard card. And the cards will come out faster as well. It's not going to ruin the game, but it's just going to change the value of that card and speed up the game. Anyways, for me, this is Forbidden Games' best game thus far. I feel like they found a great economic system that can be used in many games to come. 
So collect a team of wizards using the same school of magic with your family and friends in Lizard Wizard by Forbidden Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.